Hello, my name's Simon from Cram the Exam and welcome to another video where I walk you through part three of the speaking exam for the FCE and CAE exams. Okay, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Okay, for part one, it was uh, introductory questions to settle you in. For part two, it was your one minute long turn where you're comparing and contrasting, answering questions about uh, photographs. And if you've missed those videos, then check out my YouTube channel to make sure you find them and watch them as well. In this part three, it's all about the conversation. There's someone sitting next to you and now this is the time that you get to talk to them. So. It's all about interaction. It's all about exchanging ideas, expressing and justifying opinions. So not just saying what what you think, but why you think what you think. It's about agreeing. It's about disagreeing. It's about suggesting. It's about involving. It's about summarizing. It's about everything that you need in the conversation, bearing in mind you've got two questions to answer. So, if you are a little bit introverted or extroverted, then you better start to prepare yourself for this conversational part of the exam. If you're not much of a talker, then my best advice to you would be, first of all, practice. It's always good. Practice with other people, even better. But also assume a role. Be an actor or an actress just for three minutes. Because if you're not and you're quiet and you're not really cooperative, it's going to cost you points. So assume a role. Be an actor. Be an actress. Think of someone that you can be just for three minutes so you can talk and converse with the person sitting next to you. Alternatively, if you are a talker and you like to control the conversation and that's what you do, then you're also going to lose points. The main thing about this exam is about how you interact, how you draw other the other person into the exam, how you ask their opinions, how you pass on the conversation from one person to another person. This is, I know it's a bit cruel, there's only three minutes for you to show off your no doubt fantastic conversational skills, but conversation is about to and from. What do you say? What do I say? What do you say? What do I say? So this has got to be practiced and you've got to get the balance correct. Okay, so let's move on to the basics. What this question is all about and what this, what is actually going to happen. So you're going to be given five prompts and you've got 15 seconds to read those prompts and to start thinking. Now, it's not a lot of time, but by this point in the exam, you should have, unless you've had a nightmare for part one and part two, you should have settled down and you should be in your flow already in terms of speaking English, and you should already be thinking of ideas, the adrenaline should be pumping, uh, under control, of course, and you should be thinking of lots of different things uh, in response to questions. So you've got 15 seconds to think about those prompts. And then the part three is divided into two parts. You've got the first part, which or the first question, which is the discussion, and that's around about two minutes. And the second part is then decision making or trying to come to some kind of agreed conclusion, which is around about one minute. Now, the examiners have a script and we're going to have a look at that script in a second so you'll get a good idea of what to expect in the exam. And the FCE and the CAE are virtually identical, virtually identical. I think there's just a few minor, minor, minor changes between the two exams. So let's keep on moving. For both of the exams, you get five prompts, five prompts. So that gives you, in practice, three seconds to read each prompt not a, and start thinking. It's not a lot of time. This is something that you have to practice. The good news is, is that you don't have to use them all. You, I would advise you probably to aim towards um, two, three, four of the prompts. You don't want to get stuck on one prompt, which means that the conversation isn't moving forward, but you don't want to pressure yourself to use four or five either. So I would say three is a good number as long as the conversation looks at those three prompts from the pros and from the cons. 
it's a good idea to identify the ones you choose. Now, I know in the conversation you wouldn't announce to other people, I'm going to talk about this or I'm going to talk about this, but for the purpose of making it clear to the examiner what you're talking about to provide an extra layer of context, I would recommend that you would say, okay, let's move on to this prompt here and point at it, identify it, make sure the examiner can see it, make sure the other person you're talking to can see it. So you, there's that extra element of flow. We all know what we're talking about. It all makes sense, or at least it should do. You have to express and justify. So it's not just telling people what you think, but why you think what you think. So lots of things like because, for the reason, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's plenty of different linking devices that you can use to explain, uh, to explain your thinking. I suggest that you start practicing them and you start using them. Just saying, I think this, full stop, is not going to get you any points. For a start, it doesn't give, uh, it doesn't uh, allow for any conversation. I think this is not very good. I think this because what do you think is a conversation. And remember, this is a conversation and that you have to take turns and that you have to get used to saying, what do you think? Or can I have your opinion? Something along those lines to make sure there's that to and from which would normally, uh, that, uh, uh, that, um, that flow that exists between people when the conversation takes place. Now, you don't have to, for the second part of the exam, you don't have to agree. You can disagree. Agree to disagree. There's no penalty for uh, the lack of agreement. So if you disagree, fine, as long as you explain during the process why you disagree. And of course, keep it nice, don't make it aggressive. Um, so, And also, there are no right or wrong answers to this. The, uh, the examiners are not going to be analysing or marking your opinions. The, the examiners are going to be listening to how you express your opinions within the medium of a conversation. So there's a few things there just to help you feel a little bit at home. So you can talk about whatever you want to talk about. There's no right or wrong. You don't have to agree. But as long as you express and justify your opinions and bring the other person in, you're going to do well. Now, above my head uh, and to the side of me, you're going to see the prompts and the script for the FCE uh, Part 3 speaking exam. So, the interlocutor, the examiner, would say, now I'd like you to talk about something together for about two minutes. And of course, if there's three of you at the end of the day, then that will be three minutes for a group of three. I'd like you to imagine that a town wants more tourists to visit. Here are some ideas they're thinking about and a question for you to discuss. Uh, first, you have some time to look at the task. So this is the 15 seconds that you're given. So then you get the booklet, open at task 21 in front of the cat, uh, put in front of you, it says there, allow 15 seconds. And above my head, you'll see the five prompts and the question in the middle that you'll have a look at. So. This is a good um, a good chance for you to practice your skim and scan reading techniques, which you've no doubt fine tuned for the use of English reading exam. So the fifteen seconds is up, and then um, the examiner says, "Now talk to each other about why these ideas would attract more tourists to the town." And um, then you've got two minutes to show the examiner your fantastic speaking skills. The examiner would then stop you and say, thank you. Now you have a minute to decide which idea would be the best for them. So this is the agreeing, disagreeing, coming to a conclusion, or at least agreeing to disagree. So you've got one minute to do that. And then the examiner says, thank you. Can I have the booklet, please? The conversation element of the exam is over. And here's the script for part three for the CAE. The interlocutor starts, now I'd like you to talk about something together for about two minutes. Here are some different ways in which people communicate and a question for you to discuss. First, you have some time to have a look at the task. So, script is identical at this point, and you can see above my head the five prompts and the question that you're given. You're given 15 seconds, uh, and then the examiner will say, now talk to each other about the advantages and disadvantages of communicating in these different ways. 
conversation begins. After two minutes, the interlocutor should stop you because you should be speaking for two minutes and the exa uh, will say, thank you. Now you have about a minute to decide which two, uh, which two ways of communicating are the least effective. Now, you've got to be careful when you're listening to these questions in general for the speaking exam to make sure you catch those key words, particularly least, because least talks about the negative sides of things. So you've got to make sure that you catch those key words. You've got one minute to come to a conclusion, to agree or to agree to disagree. And then the examiner finishes the exam by saying, thank you. Can I have the booklet, please? And again, the conversation part is over. OK, so now we know what the exam is about and what the scripts are. How do you prepare for it? First of all, vocab. Um, make sure that you're able to talk about lots of different things that might come up. Now, a good way to get ready for this would be to have a look at the units in your course book and or course books if you can and see what kind of unit topics there are. Standard things, whether it's going to be the environment, friends, family, activity, sports, uh, community, whatever it might be. Have uh, Be prepared for this in terms of a wide range of vocab um, covering lots and lots of different areas, not to mention the vocab that you need for um, communicating. So agreeing, disagreeing, uh, linking devices, um, drawing people in, how do you do that, what phrases to use, etc, etc, etc. So make sure, it sounds a bit obvious really, isn't it? But know your vocab and not only that, practice your vocab as well. So if you're not practicing, I would say at least the 10, 15 hours of talking before you do your exam, then you haven't prepared enough. Um, practice your interaction and do this with people. Do this exam question with people. Do this conversation uh, part with other people. Also practice um, what I've written down here, difficult customer versus an easy customer. What I mean by that is practice talking to someone who doesn't want to talk and how would you bring them into the conversation. Uh, practice talking to someone who dominates the conversation. How would you try to get into the conversation in order to express your own ideas and opinions? Because it might be the case that you meet such people who either dominate, who don't want to take part, but you're with them in the exam. So you've got to show that you can try and bring them in or try to get in to the conversation. So you need to practice those parts uh, in those um, uh, in those eventualities, in those um things that might happen as well. Time drills, of course. You've got to be able to talk for two minutes. You've got to be able to talk for one word. If you talk for two minutes, you can talk for one minute. It goes without saying. But you've got to be able to talk until the interlocutor, the examiner, tells you to stop talking. Uh, and also covering material. So in other words, you've got to go through the points. As I said, about three, maybe four points uh, prompt is the ideal amount of prompts that you want to cover. So you've got to practice moving through material. Okay, let's talk about this one. Or this leads us on to this prompt here, etc, etc, etc. So you've got to practice moving through material in order to make sure the conversation moves on. And there we go. That's all there is to it for speaking exam part three. Uh, in many ways, the conversation is the easiest part of the exam because you're not focusing on the interlocutor, the examiner, rather you're talking to someone, hope in an ideal world, someone that you know. Um, if it's not someone that you know, one th and you uh, find out who you're going to be doing the exam with just before the exam, it's always a good idea to start talking to that person before the exam, outside of the exam hall, introduce yourself, find out who they are, ask themselves, you know, um, and very and very quickly through those initial introductions, you get to find out, um, am I talking to someone who's confident? Am I talking to someone who's not very confident? What um, is this going to, are they going to make the exam easier? Are they going to make the exam harder? So get to know the person you're doing the exam with, even if you've only got a few seconds to do that before you go into the exam hall. But talking to one of your peers generally is a little bit easier than talking to the uh, interlocutor or at least explaining your own ideas. But I keep on stressing, practice, 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 practice. There's lots of things that you can do to get ready for the exam. Not only just knowing the script, knowing what's going to happen, practicing the exam questions, but also 
just the time you need in order to, and the awareness that you might have to talk about lots of different things. You're going to have to put the hours in. Um, unfortunately, there's no easy way to do this. You might turn up on the exam and just do it and you might get top marks in which case more power to you, but for most people this will require a good number of hours preparation before doing not just this part of the exam but the whole speaking exam. Okay, one more part to analyse in more detail and we'll have a look at that next week. And as I said, if you've missed my parts, my walkthroughs for parts one and two, go to my YouTube channel and check those out as well. Okay, I'll see you next week.